All right, guys, we are going to replace a compressor, TXV, and a filter dryer in a carrier straight air conditioning unit today. I'm not in my truck. I'm in one of uh, one of the shop trucks because my truck is getting tires today. So excuse the, uh, the truck. I'm in the old Ford pickup truck with the cap on top. A uh, horrible day to uh, schedule to do tires when I got a compressor to do that day, but it's all good, man. I got everything I need loaded up. So we're gonna get this thing done today. So let's get going. Is the outdoor unit? It's off out right here. We got no vent caps, straight air conditioner. Man, very low unit. Looks like we uh, couldn't ask for a better change out here. Compressor change out anyway. Filter dryer. All right, let's go look at the air handler. And look at this garage upflow. But yeah, so we'll get that popped off. TXV will be right in here, but not bad at all, guys. Let's get this thing recovered and let's do it. All right, <clears throat> we're recovering the refrigerant now. We'll get her all recovered and let's get going. All right, so here's our TXV. I might actually pull this guy out some if I can get it out without incident. I can get it out a little. Well, I'll get it out as much as I can. If I have to cut the, the condensate, I will. Maybe here. I don't know. To get this guy out enough to change it. <clears throat> that looks like the hardest part of my day getting this TXV changed and it's not even really that hard I might be able to cut a couple of these zip ties and be able to pull the liquid line out enough to get to everything alright still recovering almost done but look at this, this is weird. I've never really seen one frost at the top before. That means there's refrigerant trapped up here. Nothing on the, in the middle and a little on the bottom too. Isn't that weird? Look, that's frost on the top there. That's, that's weird. Hmm. Like I said, usually it's just frost at the bottom where the oil and uh, where the refrigerant is trapped in the oil at the bottom of the compressor. There must be refrigerant trapped in oil up here also. This is an LG compressor, by the way. Very interesting. All right, we got her all recovered down. We're going to go ahead. Before we start taking off the... Uh, the discharge and suction line. We're going to go ahead and take the uh, the bolts out. And since I'm not in my normal truck or I would have long extensions, I didn't think about grabbing it to do this. So I got her all unbolted. I just realized I have a half inch nut driver for my drill. So that made it a little bit easier. All right, let's get our nitro flowing. Uh, we're gonna dump it in the low side, let it pour out the high side. Uh, let's back this all the way up. Because we want it right in that, that orange area there when we're brazing. Just enough to get some nitro flowing. Right, right there should be good. All right. We're gonna get this on braze. You know what? Let me cut this zip tie too. <clears throat> Probably be okay, but 
just in case. Move that out of the way. All right, I would cut this, but there's not a whole lot of piping there and a not, not a whole lot to work with, so we're just gonna unsweat this. All right, <clears throat> hit it with a little bit of sandpaper first. Try to make that a little bit easier. So, all right, let's do it. I do that sorry my camera moved a little bit but um, I unsweat the top first get that bent out of the way because you can manipulate the smaller line better and then with the compressor unbolted unsweat your suction line and pull the compressor out of the way I know you can't do that in every in every circumstance but on these carrier units um, it's a pretty easy easy deal to do that <clears throat> and while my stubs were still hot, I beat them over because uh, this compressor will be returned for warranty and we'll just braze those ends. And it'll be good enough for the manufacturer. <clears throat> All right, let's get our new compressor set. All right, getting our new LG compressor opened up here. Gave us a new plug here. However, I'm not going to use this because this doesn't, unless I have to, I like our plug better. It's uh, rubber, more weatherproof it looks like. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and knock my filter dryer out real quick. Cut myself a little short, so um, got to pull it tight. <laughs> and like I said, I am not in my normal truck today, so I don't even have any spare 3 8 with me. We're gonna make this work though. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. I do have the compressor set too, but it's not brazed in yet. Um, I just wanna get this knocked out while I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna braze this side first and then pull this side up to it very tight. Cut myself short. That's all right, we'll get it figured out. All right, I got my top one brazed in. Um, I have my filter dryer zip tied to my suction line, a towel laid down here. So I can, so this would stay and pull up taunt. Um, yeah, like I said, we're figuring it out. We're gonna get it done. Should be, should work out. So I won't have to worry about this falling out or the filter dryer falling off because I got it zip tied in place. All right, let's get it breezed. All right, guys, on to the compressor.
messy at the bottom of that one. A little messy on the bottom of both of them, really, but I think they're sealed. I'm just going to hit them one more time at the bottoms, just to be sure. Suction line's fine, discharge was a little messy. We got her though. All right, let's take a look. Not bad. All right, we're just about done with the brazing outside. I'll have to go in and work on that TXV next. Then we can pressure test and vacuum. I think I got it pulled out enough where I can work on it. Let's see if I can break this nut free without having to... Nope, I'm gonna have to back it up. Man, there is a ton of oil in this TXV, look at that. Oh my God. No wonder this thing went up. <clears throat> Hope this evaporator isn't oil logged. All right, guys, I shut my service valves and I am going to fire some nitrogen in through the low side and try to get out any oil that might be trapped in that evaporator. Um, if it's oil logged, there's probably not a whole lot I'm gonna be able to do with it, but this will at least give us a shot to get some of the oil out. I'm gonna try to maneuver my little bucket here. So it'll catch any oil that shoots out of there. That's a lot of oil. I'm not sure if I got it all out, but that is an immense amount of oil to be trapped in the evaporator. All right, we got the new TXV in. Um, I'm leaving it out a little bit till I pressure test, um, which I'm about to do right now. But this is a little bit of a pain in the ass. I got as much oil out of the, ev out of the evaporator as I could. Um, had a conversation with the homeowner. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what it's looking like. Um, if we need to replace the evaporator later, we will, but we'll see how it's running now. Uh, with the new TXV and new compressor. I did get a lot of oil out of it, so I'm uh, feeling pretty confident about it, but you never know. So we'll see how it makes out. All right, guys, I am pulling my vacuum now. Um, I'm going two hose right now, but I think once I go to finish up, I'm gonna break that down to a one hose. I'm just gonna cut my valve cord mover off right here and just let it finish up on the on the suction side so I can get a good true micron reading here. So, all right, we just got her on now. We'll let her pump for a while. Hey guys, I got my cheetah cord here um, for electric. I had an outlet right here, but it's hooked up to a GFI, GFCI, and my pump does not like GFI outlets for some reason. Every time I try to use a GFI protected outlet, it trips the GFI. I don't know what the deal is with it, and it, it did it even when it was new. The very, uh, maybe second or third time I used it, hooked it up to a GFI, it tripped it. Sometimes it'll go 10 or 15 minutes and trip it. 
Sometimes it'll trip it right away like it did today. Just a weird deal, man. I don't know. Anybody else with, uh, with the field piece vacuum pump? This is the 8CFM, the VP87. Um, let me know. Let me know if you guys have, uh, have issues with them tripping GFIs. They don't trip the breaker, just trips the GFI. So I don't know if there's something inside this particular pump or what it is, but definitely doesn't like GFI protected outlets. All right, guys, we just fired up. I got it on now. I got it. My gauge is kind of tucked back here because they were in the sun and it made the screen really dark. So I got to put it back here, but looks like I got a little bit of topping off to do. Looks like I think we're looking for 11 degrees of indoor TXV subcooling. So we'll try to achieve that. We'll go ahead and top it off. Alright guys, we're almost up to 8 degrees of subcooling. Uh, just about almost 5 degrees of superheat. Suction line temperature is at 47, so this thing's doing pretty good right now. I'll try to add a little more to get us up close to 11, what it's calling for, but um, I would be okay leaving it like this. We'll let it run for a little while longer because that subcooling's still coming up. Alright guys, we are trying to get you guys in there. Just about a little over 11 degrees of subcooling. It's in and out as the sun's in and out. And uh, if I <clears throat> if I let it beat in the sun, I got 11 degrees of subcooling. If I cover my probes up, it's higher. If I cover the unit up, it's different. So I'm just letting it beat in the sun like it would be if I wasn't here. And uh, and yeah, that this is what I'm getting. I'm getting between 11 and 12 degrees of subcooling, nine degrees of superheat. I mean, this thing's doing really good, really, really good. So um, as it stands right now, I'm not worried about an oil log evaporator. I think I got whatever oil I could out. New TXV, new filter dryer, new compressor. This thing seems like it's doing great. So we might leave it like this.